Moving across the floor now, I'd like to welcome Mick Mulvaney. Mick is a former congressman who served as the White House Chief of Staff during the Trump presidency and is a former director of the Office of Management and Budget. He's worked as an on-air contributor for CBS News since 2022. This is also Mick's second visit to the union in two weeks, which I think is a glowing endorsement. Mm -hmm. Mick, you have the ears of the house. Um. Thank you all very much. It, this is great. Um, I, again, I was here last week and I did the thing where we sit up on the stage and take some questions. This, this is so much better uh, and so much more fun. And I am so really convinced that the only person I could probably out debate here is Trey, um, who's a good friend of mine. Um, and it's great to see the, the power of debate and the power of, of free speech and the power of language. Of course, I, I struggle with the language a little bit. Being from the other country, I understood most of what Harrison said. Um, <laughs> I understand everything Dylan said. I would love to get to that question at the end if you, if you give me a chance to do that. Um, language actually almost got me in trouble here because when we, when we talk about being separated, you know, two countries separated by a common language, a, a lot of this is easy to deal with. You know, we know that you guys stand in queues and we stand in lines um, and you guys go on holiday and we go on vacation. So words that are different but they mean the same things. Um, then we have words that uh, are spelled the same and mean the same, but they mean something, uh, but they're pronounced differently. You guys, uh, when you put rosemary and thyme on food, you use herbs. We use herbs. Actually, I think you're right on that one because it does have an H in it. Um, I keep waiting for the F in lieutenant, um, and I'm not really sure where you put the extra syllable in al aluminum which is five, and we do it as four, but those don't matter. They're not big problems. We have the same problem in my country, by the way. I don't understand a word he's saying half the time anyway. Um, if you've never heard Trey Gowdy's speech uh, speak before, we grew up 90 minutes from each other. I've known him for 10 years. His accent is so thick that sometimes I have to stop and ask him to translate. Again, those are not the things that get us in trouble. What get us in trouble are the words that look the same, sound the same, spell the same, and mean something entirely different. Um, you guys have, uh, <laughs> this is where I, I told, I promised my wooden curse. So you guys have to use your imagination. On this one. We have carpeting in the United States that we can't talk about in front of you. If anybody gets that one, please raise your hand. And you guys can't ask us for a cigarette without being really, really careful. Okay. <laughs> Trump for you guys is a winning card. And for us, it's a losing candidate. Um, but the thing that almost got me in trouble was blue. Vote blue, no matter who. Uh, I had been here last week, two weeks ago, for the Tory party conference, and I wore a red tie to the Tory party conference and was immediately told that blue over here is conservative. So when I got the, the, the statement, when I got the motion, we shall vote blue no matter who, I thought it meant I was going to have to get up here and tell you to vote conservative or Republican no matter what. And I was really, really struggling with that because I don't believe it. I don't, and I will get to your point before it's over. I, I just, I, do, I don't understand how anybody gets to that point where it doesn't make any difference who the people are or what the policies are, that you're going to vote for one party or another regardless of basically everything. Um, tonight then, once we found out, I was thankful um, that I was able to take the other position of that, that I can sit here and say, yeah, you don't have to vote blue no matter who. I couldn't argue that any more than I could vote and then I could argue, vote red until you're dead. Trey and I and Katie are not here to try and convince you to vote Republican. That's not our point. We are trying to, to be here tonight to convince you to not take what we consider to be a mindless, absolutist approach on things that are really, really important. Because that is really, really dangerous. I know that history is against me in this building on that. In 1937, this body took up the proposition, and I will read it. Quote, the motion is that lasting peace can only be secured by the people of England adopting an uncompromising attitude of pacifism. It passed. 213 to 138. I also understand that Oxford, being Oxford and being slow, took it up several years later uh, <laughs> under, the, under the title... Their motion was, this house shall, under no circumstances, fight for king and country. Early 1940s. It passed. 275 to 153. Now, history has debated ever since whether or not that had an impact on the war, whether or not it encouraged the Germans in their, in their aggression, as they saw that as a sign of what Britain stood for going into the Second World War. 
But I would suggest to you that it's absolutist positions such as that. Look at the language. Uncompromising attitude of pacifism. Under no circumstances. That that kind of language is really, really dangerous and really, really weak. There is a better position. And that better position came from this building as well. Um, the, the line is actually um, um, uh, when someone was accused one time of, of changing their opinion on something, and they were said, well, yes, sir, when you, when you change my, when I get new information, I change my mind, what do you do? Okay, it's attributed to John Maynard Keynes, the former president of this organization. Um, by the way, there's a lot of folks who say, in my country who attribute it to uh, Philip Samuelson, an American. I give it to Keynes, even though I studied Samuelson's text, because Keynes, excuse me, Samuelson actually said it was, it was, uh, it was Keynes himself. And I believe in that. We'll give him credit for that. That came from this body. That is a thoughtful position. That is the position we need from our current leaders. That is the position we need from our current elected officials. That's the position that we need from you. I'm old, not as old as Trey, not as old as Jay, but I'm old, and my time in public service is about to end. It actually already has ended. The next generation of leaders need to be the type of people who can look at facts and make decisions on a case-by-case-by-case -by -case -by -case basis. The world is a dangerous and changing place, and if you go into it absolutely convinced about this or this, you may end up in real trouble. I am concerned that this generation is not doing that. I teach a class, or I've spoken to a class at UCLA, uh, some of you here last week may have heard the story, so I apologize for the repetition. Uh, we had a young man, it was a group, uh, a third this size, 60 people. And we were talking about community policing. And the moderator said, uh, when I say Los Angeles Police Department, what do you, what's the first word to come in your mind? And the kid said, racist. Right? The moderator goes, why do you say that? He says, well, look, we all know. We all know that the Los Angeles Police Department was born with the original sin of slavery. It was created to return escaped slaves to their masters. And it carries through to the, to the current day. Just last week, we all read the story in the paper, about, actually online, we all read the story online about how the police shot the unarmed black man 62 times. If that's not racist, I don't know what is. Sitting next to him, and I give him credit for being as candid as he was, sitting next to him was the chief of the Los Angeles Police Department. Instead of reacting negatively, he, he did what I would assume you would do in this building. Okay? You have an honest debate. And he said, young man, let me tell you something. I get it, and I hear you, but a couple of things. Number one, this police department was not created until 1868. It is not physically possible for us to have been in the business of returning return, uh, slaves to their owners because slavery was abolished before we were created. Number two, I saw the same story in social media about the, uh, the shooting last week. It was a terrible episode. It absolutely was. We actually shot the guy 22 times, not 64. He discharged his weapon 18 times against my men. It was a terrible, terrible tragedy, but it was real. And all I'm telling you is that some of the assumptions you are making is wrong, are wrong. And the young man said, I don't care, you're racist, we all know it. That is an absolutist approach. That is an absolutist approach to a, to a very serious and complex issue, and it is extraordinarily dangerous to do it. I, let me, I've got about two minutes. I'll be happy to take your questions. That young man um, is voting, I would guess, on Tuesday, um, and my guess is um, that he is probably voting blue no matter who. We need you to do better. I had no idea what Katie was going to say. You probably guessed that by the fact that they put a liberal Democrat on our team with us. I thought it was fabulous. I thought it was fabulous. I thought it was someone who said, you know what? I am not going to take the absolutist position. There's got to be a better way. There's got to be a different way. Maybe I vote blue most of the time, but every now and then for different reasons that are my own, that are well thought out, well considered and reasonable, maybe then I'll vote another way. That's all we are asking you to do. I'm getting ready to close, I promise. All we're asking you to do tonight is when you walk through the door and you vote no, <laughs> follow me on this, it doesn't mean you're voting Republican. It doesn't mean you're voting for Congress control of folks who are in riots. It certainly doesn't mean you're voting for Donald Trump. All it means is that you are reserving the right to change your mind at some point in the future. If you see something she says that convinces you, I say that convinces you, that you see on your own, that convinces you, maybe this one time, I'm not going to vote blue. 
That's what we need you to do. If we fail at that, I'm trusting that it has nothing to do with your academics and your intellect and everything to do with my inabilities when it comes to persuasion and rhetoric, and most importantly, with Trey's inability to speak the English language in a comprehensible fashion. So with that, I will take your question. Yes, sir, you were first. And then I'll come to Dylan, too, before I don't know how much time we've got left. Right. But in the here and now, not in theory, in the here and now, what are the real reasons not to vote Democrat given everything the Republican Party is in 2022? Thank you for that, and I appreciate that. Actually, I, I left the part of my speech out where I said what I was, because Trey and I tried to coordinate on this, and again, we're not very good at this, where I was going to give you the high, lofty, philosophical stuff, and he was going to go through the practical reasons of why you should vote, uh, you shouldn't always vote blue. So if you would hold that to his speech, that would be great. Is that satisfactory to you? Is it satisfactory to you? Okay. Somebody else had a question. I don't know how, much, I don't know how you guys do this, so. You are against uncompromising attitudes. There's no time for uncompromising attitudes. Churchill had an uncompromising attitude against fascism and Nazism. I have an uncompromising attitude against those who would endanger my democracy. So why isn't it right to have an uncompromising attitude against people who storm the Capitol and try to break down our democracy? I'm against storming the Capitol. I'm against folks trying to break down our democracy. I quit my job over it. I'm the only person in this room who actually gave something up out of protest, my guess is. I quit my job over it because I felt so strongly about it. But I don't take that to the absolute extreme of, and therefore I am never, ever, ever going to vote for anything other than a Democrat again. In my mind, that is giving up the moral high ground, the academic high ground, the intellectual high ground. You can be as angry as you want. Believe me, it's unlikely you as angry as I were. Okay? I, I, I've said some things privately President of the United States that would probably curl your hair. Okay? There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with anger. But to take it to that and say, every Republican is a fascist. Every Republican is a white supremacist. Every Republican wants to undo democracy. That simply doesn't hold water. There's some good people in both parties. There's, a lot, there's bad people in both parties. Keep in mind, there is no party in Washington that says, oh my goodness, you are the craziest person we know in, in New York City. You are going to be Alexander Cortez. You are coming to Washington. You are the craziest person that we know in Georgia. You are Marjorie Taylor Greene. You are coming to Washington. That's not how it works. People elect them, and they send them to Washington, D.C. There is this, there's no magic, dark, invisible hand that, run, that runs the country. We send the people that we, for whatever reason, perceive to be the best, and there are good folks in both parties. They're not all crazy. I'll, I'll do, you know me. I'll do this all night, but I think I'm... But, Oh, sorry. You don't want to drink that? <laughs> Actually, I, can I finish with Dylan? Because he, he asked me a question, and I really promise. I, 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 thank you for coming both times. Um, I appreciate that. And I did tell the story. He, the question was about the Access Hollywood tape, uh, when the president said that he would grab a woman by thus and such. Uh, and I got, I was actually asked that night, in a debate, I was running for Congress at the time, um, what I thought about that comment, what I thought about Donald Trump, and I said, it sounds like he's a horrible human being, and it would end anybody else's political career. Is that what I said? Something to that effect. Uh, and your question is, then why did I continue to go on to work for him, right? Um, and the answer to that question is that I think we all make mistakes. I do. I've said some really stupid things. I've probably said some stupid things here tonight. Now, you may sit there and think, well, wait a second. We all know that that was what Donald Trump is all of the time. I've seen other sides of him. I told the story here um, last week about the, uh, the African-American guy who tracked me down when I was on television. I was on television the weekend after the Charlottesville riots, all right? And I went on TV to try and calm things down. There were race riots in Charlottesville, Virginia, for those of you who aren't familiar with it. And the cameraman literally chased me down the hallway as I was leaving. A large African-American guy said, Ms. Ms. Mulvaney, Ms. Mulvaney, Ms. Mulvaney, I'm going to talk to you. And I was a little bit apprehensive. I didn't know what was going to happen. I said, yes, sir, what's that? He said, you're going to see the president later on? I said, yeah. He goes, you tell him Ronaldo said hello. I said, I'm sorry, what? You tell him Ronaldo said hello. He was the best boss I ever had. I worked for him for eight years on The Apprentice. I was a cameraman. I would work for him again in a second. Does that mean he's not a racist? No. Is that a different data point that I have in making my decisions? Yes. Would I vote for the man again? Before? I've said several times in public that I wouldn't, okay? 
but that doesn't mean that I'm going to vote blue no matter who. I've reserved the right to make a decision on you and you and you and you based upon all the things that I consider to be important when I come to vote for you. And I hope that you all continue to do the same and vote no on the motion. Thank you.